picking on, misusing uh, simple people and trying to align them with causes that were actually foreign to their even their cultures or their their groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so it's, all right. So today, so today, where are you? Uh, a Nazi or where? I'm joking. Where where are you politically? Farm in Ohio, and I um, meaning simple, no electricity. No, but we're polit- Hold on. Little. Stop talking for a minute. We have to do this on the show. I can't hear you. You can't hear me when there's cell phones used. Where are you politically today on the spectrum? Politically, I'm 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 to the right, very conservative. I can't think of a better word to use. Um, Let's not use the word ever again on the show because it was destroyed by the uh, by the uh, uh, the Ted Cruz campaign. You know, once they, they, they voted for TPP and they still call him a conservative, it's kind of muddied the waters. I would say you're probably more of a what mild nationalist. Maybe if you use the old British idea of a liberal, which, you know, that word has gotten destroyed. Um, what, when they said that uh, I may disagree with you, but I would fight with my life the right for you to say it, that kind of liberal? Yes, yeah. But uh, I'm going to have to be voting for Donald Trump. I just, there's no way. There I- we go again. That's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe you should form a coalition since you're a former organizer called Former Hippies for Trump. There we go. (laughs) You see, I can tell you, just by the fact that you can laugh at a silly little joke means that you're still very, very fluid inside. You're not as stiff as Republicans. (laughs) (laughs) That's for sure. I'm serious. I work with natural foods and growing organics and things, and and I hang around the crowd a lot that, well, we sometimes lock horns because we don't have the same world view. But... uh, you know, you look- Tell me something. I, I bought some wheatgrass the other day, actual wheatgrass that's growing like live wheatgrass in a container. And I actually bought it in Safeway in San Francisco. And I was like munching on it. You know, I, I've been into like alternative medicine health for many years. You may know that for if you've read books. I've been publishing books in that area when I was pre-radio. And it's a fascinating world. It's why I'm still living, by the way. And... What is this thing? Do you eat wheatgrass? Have you ever eaten it? Do you make it into a drink or, 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 or a blender? What do you do? You eat it? Well, I, I have not grown that myself. I have drank that. and it doesn't... I, I think you're supposed to put it in a blender. I, unfortunately, ate it like a goat. I threw it on my salads. It's very hard to chew. But my energy level is much higher. It's shocking. I don't know whether it's the wheatgrass or something else. Yeah. Which city do you live? Um, I'm looking at it. You, double, you live in Detroit? No, no, no. I'm out in the countryside. I bought a farm from the Amish, and I raise animals and vegetables. I'm near Ashland, Ohio. Oh, my I'm God. Place amazing. Is- amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful country out there. Well, I'm so honored, by the way, that I have such a remarkably versatile audience. I don't want to overuse the word diverse. It's an amazingly versatile audience. It's not because if I say my audience is diverse, it's different than saying it's versatile. Because it means that each one is an individual who does different things. And I want to thank you. I'm sending you a gift called Government Zero. What an amazing show today. I just got news from corporate headquarters, by the way. Are you ready for this? You in Texas? Robert? Jim? Doug? Have you heard about how KLIF in Dallas is seeing growth with your show? So I've made the needle move on KLIF. Thank you for listening down there in Dallas and everywhere else. I got some other good callers waiting. This is so much fun for me. And I'm finding out who my audience is, as I've always thought, and it'll help me, by the way, be myself more. It's very hard to be yourself in the media. I got to tell you, if you think it's easy to, to project what's really on your mind when you're at the same time thinking, well, what does the audience think and what do they want to hear and, you know, where should I go today? And at the end of the day, you do have to do what you do, and you have to think the way you think and project it, or else there's no point. They're going to hear right through it. If you're, if you're faking it, or if you're too strident, they're going to hear that as well. They're going to know that you're just insecure and you're covering up. That's the thing, is they hear. I mean, we have no other instrument. I have no other instruments. No flashing lights, where every second, like on Fox News, breaking news, every second. That's called hypnopedia in the old Huxley books better known as a brainwashing or conditioned responses, which I studied as a young psychology student uh, when we learned how to make mice do certain things. Breaking news, flash. And you you, you want to change the channel, but they don't let you because it's like breaking news. You Oh, maybe there really is. You know it's not going to be breaking news. But you can't help yourself, so you listen even for another two minutes, and you boost their rating. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. What news? What breaking news? The snow is falling. The, the earth is spinning. You know. 
The, the sardines moved across the bay. <laughs> the poor birds are still coming off my jetty looking for the sardines that are not here anymore. The, 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 the school of sardines, according to the fishermen. It gave me such faith yesterday. The fisherman said to me, I said, you gather all these things up in the net, millions of these things. And I said, the birds eat them. Like I said, how does the species survive? He said, Michael, he didn't know my name. He said, actually, you know, stranger, because we were strangers. He said, we followed the school in through the Golden Gate. It is one mile long, a half a mile wide. That's how big the school of fish is. That gave me, uh, it gave me feel good, that things are good. You know what I'm saying? It's not all horrible. The world's not coming to an end. It's winter. The snow is falling. The ski, the, the snowpack is back in the Sierra. The lakes are filling up again. And Jerry Brown's still passing global warming legislation. I wonder why. I just wonder why they're still talking about global warming in the drought. I love the local paper there that says, a Folsom Lake rose 30 feet in a week. And they show a picture of the drought from last May. They don't even show one picture of the new lake. Unbelievable how this goes on. Here we go. Next caller. WJR again in Detroit. Diane, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hey, Michael. I think we're having an old hippie reunion today. We uh, are. We are. We are. This is um, a hippie radio. WHIP radio. Yeah, I, I grew up about 15 minutes outside of Washington, D.C., and uh, started politics when I was about eight years old and campaigned for Steny Hoyer and... Uh, <laughs> oh, you did a lot of good for America with him. God. ever since. So, hey, so what are you? What are you today, Diane? What are you today as a liberal? You're not going to like it, Michael. Can't we just pretend we're sitting on a bench? You've got Teddy there, and we're having a nice talk about the weather. No, I'm. Uh oh. No. Okay. No. No. I I ask for it. Where are you politically? Yeah, I'm. I like Bernie, and I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't take the corporate money. That just means a lot to me. I, like I said... Yeah, but I'm I, sure Karl Marx didn't take uh, corporate Russian money either. Look with how how that worked out for Russia. I look at him and I think, he's been in the Congress, he's been a mayor, he's been, you know, in the system, but he's still... Well, let, let me help you think your way through this. We're facing down ISIS. Do you think that that guy from the gutters of New York is going to lead the military into a fight against ISIS, the greatest threat we faced in this nation since Hitler, that man is going to com commandeer the troops and command respect? Yeah, I do. And I, you know why I tell you that? Oh, come on. Now, I could see how you worked for, for uh, Steny Hoyer. You really... Uh, so why do you listen to me if I'm opposite to that? How come? I work for um, in emergency management in Washington, D.C., and I was no, I, ho, ho, ho. Okay, stop talking because we can't hear each other. Diane, you want to vote for Bernie Sanders. Then why do you listen to me on WJR? Because I think you have a lot of wisdom about so many things. And, you know, I think you're right on lots of things. And I think, you know, if, if Hillary gets nominated, I'm voting for Trump. Oh, that's interesting. Because why? Because she's corrupt? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's just the worst ever. <laughs> this is fascinating. I have heard this from other true liberals, or let's say lifetime le left-wing fanatics like you. They've all said to me they won't vote for Hillary because she's absolutely corrupt. They won't touch her. They'd rather vote for Trump. But you didn't say something that you'd expect. You didn't say, if Hillary's the nominee, I'll sit out the election. I didn't hear that. How come you didn't say that? Because I want an outsider. And their two outsiders are Trump and Bernie. And the thing that I, when I think about Hillary, I always say to people, I said, she is a corporation masquerading as a human female. And that's how I feel. <laughs> I mean, she, I don't even see a humanity in her. Oof, yeah, Money and corporations. And For, former, 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 former. Um, so you've come to the hippie reunion today on the Savage Nation, WHIP Radio. Yes, I have. And oh, also, right. I saw the dresses on your web page, and I oh, you you looked at the out of town gowns. Tell me what your how, what your reactions were. I swear, I thought it was something retro, and I thought it was like a Goodwill thrift shop fashion show when I first. Yeah, that's that's San Francisco's uh, elite, so to speak, in a nutshell. It looks like a Goodwill fashion show. 
But I don't understand these women. Do they not even understand what they're doing, what they look like, what they're wearing? No. That's how they can put Feinstein, Boxer, Pelosi uh, over and over again back into the Congress. They don't even know. They're like the, they're like the seagulls and the birds I talk about. Thousands of them line up to get the sardines along the jetty. And if I walk out of my deck and I move too abruptly, it only takes one bird to get spooked and fly for the entire flock of a thousand to get spooked and fly away. That's what San Francisco politics looks like to me. They're herd. It's a herd mentality, a bird mentality. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. Thanks for listening back in a minute. Talk about corruption. Look at this story. Google agrees to pay $185 million in U.K. tax settlements. The average person says, wow, what a fortune. That's peanuts. The, the, the U.K. taxes, which they've been evading forever, according to experts, they're paying these taxes going back to 2005 is what they're paying. Could you believe this? The tech giant Google paid $16 million in U.K. corp tax from 06 to 11 on $18 billion of revenue. Think about $18 billion of revenue. They paid $16 million in U.K. corporation tax. Do you know what they would have paid here in the United States? Even with deductions, Google, Microsoft, they're all the same. They all use, they have a 1,000 lawyers, tax lawyers who used to work for the IRS. They use tax strategies known as the double Irish and the Dutch sandwich, first reported by Bloomberg in October of 2010. And we know that Google has avoided billions of dollars of income taxes around the world. And we also know that that's why Obama loves Google and why Google loves Obama. That's all. That's how it works. One hand washes the other. And you wonder why the people are enraged in this country? You wonder why they are either screaming for Sanders or Trump? You think that they don't want these buccaneers to pay their fair share? Well, that's it for the day. What a day it's been. All you cheese heads and you zucchini heads, have a good weekend. Savage.